I have allowed myself to be identified as a lesbian and I self-identified as a lesbian it was because I believed that individuals should be able to be autonomous and sovereign and make their own decisions about how they engage with people and that sexual relations and sexual activity should be divorced from and removed from resource acquisition or commerce everything about me being lesbian or queer was 100 percent anti-commercialization of sexuality and anti-contractual uh, property-based relations as experienced or expressed through sexual intercourse to me the absolute opposite of gay liberation was marriage and so when the movement defined its political goals as being about obtaining marriage as a civil right it no longer had any relevancy to me it actually became antithetical to me from a political perspective and as a result i began to evaluate my concepts of desire and sexuality accordingly you can i believe change or decide how to act on your desire you can desire something but whether you pursue it and whether you actualize it is a personal decision you can desire all kinds of things you could think all kinds of things are attractive but i like that man or i find that woman attractive but she's married and in order for me to be with her i know that she would have to violate her agreement as somebody who's married to be with me for that time frame. That's how I see marriage in consideration of sexual liberation. If somebody agrees to a committed monogamous relationship, especially one that has legal standing concerning describement of property and or uh, uh, the capacity to speak for or on behalf of other people, and they've already done this in a formal manner and then you try to compel them to breach that contract you've made that decision and so when gay rights became civil rights about getting access to marriage i evaluated accordingly and i said if i were to be married then i would go through the situation where i would conform or rather modify my understanding of the goals of sexual liberation in an evolutionary perspective the material conditions did not exist including the intangible and abstract material conditions did not exist for conceiving of sexuality outside of a construct connected to property relations and dealing with the dysphoria around my body is about more than just what attracts me visually I can say no, just as somebody can say no to me. Getting to know someone and developing an intimate relationship and committing to a monogamous relationship, including one that might involve a marriage contract, means that you have to find somebody else that you're compatible with. So me as a female-bodied woman should be able to meet a man as a male-bodied man, and then we get to know each other, and we work through the awkwardness, and then we commit, and short of that, there's no point to me, as long as, 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 as well as I see, to see gay liberation or LGBTQ liberation within the construct of marriage as a civil right as being compatible. They're not. And so as far as I'm concerned, there is no LGBTQ liberation movement. Marriage is not a civil right. Marriage is a property right. And it's one that the highest element of me does not agree with. But from a materialist, a historical materialist perspective, I understand that evolutionarily speaking, we have not created material preconditions for an actual democratic society that can understand relationships with each other outside of property relations. And insofar as that's the case, then just like with other concepts of so-called socialism, we have to deal with the facts at hand. Material preconditions also include intellectual and democratic and education in terms of educating each other, and that includes financial democracy. So we need to be literate around financial matters, and we need to engage in financial democracy. And once we're able to do that, we may have a form of industrial democracy where we have greater understanding of our role in the productive relations. And once we do that, we can 
recognize our self-interest in claiming ownership of the means of production, including our intellectual capital production. Short of that, uh, property rights as expressed through sexual intercourse is a matter of conservation of energy. Now, in the course of coming to this realization from a completely political perspective, there was also the dealing with the physiological aspects of having a certain level of consciousness and a certain level of spiritual acuity and honestly believing that I had gone through some sort of a uh, ultra-dimensional initiation into a form of indigenous uh, spirituality without an actual contextualization for a named tribal association or a formal process. Um, and also started experiencing um, various kinds of engagement with technology. And in the course of that came to realize that the LGBTQ movement was connected to this transhumanist political movement that was specifically about cybernetic enhancement. And part of cybernetic enhancement is also about manipulating hormone levels. And Understanding technology acknowledges that experiencing low-level radio frequency manipulates hormone levels. And then if you start you know, studying or learning about actual matters connected to the financial system, you realize that the kinds of accounting structures related to female body people and male body people may not always be the most commercially opportune for people that are the primary interest connected to those financial transactions. And at some point, it became more politically opportune to establish financial regimes based on male-bodied and male-bodied having transactional processes that could be affirmed and confirmed in public. And female and female having affirmed and confirmed in public. And if we allowed for our disillusionment and alienation from the productive capacity of our body to be generated into a civil rights movement that focused on superficiality or reformist agendas that try to manipulate existing paradigms to conform to the civil rights analysis, then we did not have the same momentum in getting a political movement together around ownership of the means of production, including our own production. And so understanding the way that our bodies are being manipulated and the other elements of our life are being characterized by somebody else becomes less of a political issue and less of an issue connected to our democracy and our participation in society. Fast forward a couple years, you don't have sex, you don't make those deals, where you're like, why do I keep having the same situation where in order for me to sleep inside, I have to sleep with the same guy with the same story, and when I say no, I'm back on the street and I have to go through the pipeline. And then you get to Albany, New York, May 1st, 1977. And then you start looking, what the hell? You mean the year that that bond cashes out is the year I meet somebody who becomes my first potential relationship partnership right on the year of the maturity of that bond? Go from there. Go from there. It's not a civil rights issue. Somebody hedging that I would meet somebody that was from the area that was bonded on the year of its maturity so that I could be impregnated and forced to have an abortion so that that fetus and the billing records for that fetus could be flipped as part of the cash out on that bond and the rollover into another. It's not a civil rights issue. 